So I read an article this morning from the Economic Collapse blog, and I wanted to talk a little bit about that, how our uh, economy is basically deteriorating. And along with that, and, and they go into this in the article as well, I'll break down a couple points of this. But they talk about how society is deteriorating uh, at the same time, which leads to what they call this ma these Mad Max conditions. Uh, I also have a video that I just watched, and I want to just play the beginning of this video from the Prepared Homestead, where he talks about calling good evil and evil good. Uh, I'm not going to play that whole video, but I'll link to it below. Uh, really good video talks about how where we're going as a society and how things are falling apart. Uh, as I read this article and watched this video, I couldn't help but think about some of the, the discussions we're having in the private group, the members.survivalistpreppers.net group, where Kenzie, who is a native up in Canada, had recently lost his mother. Uh, another member had recently lost their mother, and I'm going through some things with my dog which has is is as hard as it as it is with a pet as nothing compared to especially a mother but a human being a family member somebody you've created a really good bond with uh, it's nothing compared to that but what they were talking about Kanzi had posted something today about how uh, his mother had just passed recently and somebody had gone into her house and 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 burglarized it you know vandalized it did all sorts of things and you you this, these types of things are sort of acceptable today. These types of things don't get, uh, you know, they, they don't have the repercussions that they used to have. And people are just almost feel like it's, they can do this because there's nobody to stop them from doing it. There's nobody to, it, it's basically a slap on the hand these days. Uh, everyone allows this to happen. And that sort of leads to, uh, you know, when, when money's tight or when the opportunity presents itself, these people are, are more emboldened to do things like that. And it, with the economic factor coming into this, like I'm going to talk about, you get people that are broke, people that can't afford food, people that, uh, and this this is the same situation that I'm talking about with Kansi. You get people that can't afford these things. They, they, they go to these measures, people that are on drugs, people that uh, can't afford to put food on the table for their families. They go to these measures because it's the only means that they can as well as they know that they're not going to get uh, reprimanded for that or put in jail for that or, you know, it's it's acceptable. And it's not just the powers that be with this. It's everybody in the community, I think, that needs to make sure these people are held accountable. Uh, in the United States, on a much larger picture, and, and Canada, I'm sure, is the same, on a much larger scale, uh, the the societies, we sort of deal with this. We have this empathy for people that are homeless, for people that are on drugs, because it's not their fault for doing this. But it all starts at the top with this, and that's where it needs to be worked from the top down, not the bottom up, like, you know, just like guns. Uh, that's where people want to start with is at the bottom. What's this easiest cause that we can solve? And it's lock everybody up, get rid of all the guns, those those types of solutions. But the problems start at the top, and that's where you need to look to solve these problems. These politicians, the, the community leaders, these people allow this stuff to happen. And then when it happens, they look for solutions that are, you know, that, that they feel like is, is a humanitarian solution without locking people up and throwing them in jail. So they cause the problem and don't know how to fix the problem. So the problem, it just gets worse and worse as time goes on. So I want to play just the beginning of this video here from the Prepared Homestead where he talks about how all of this stuff is accepted. Uh, I'm not, like I said, I'm not going to play the whole video, but it's really good. I'll make sure and link to it below. I found a couple of things online, you know, you, you spend time online and you find things that are, well, a lot of times just flat out disgusting. So I thought it would be a good topic um, to somehow twist it into a, <laughs> a preparedness video. With all the things, I've said this many times before. I've said it here on, on this channel, and I've said it to many people in, in person. Of all the things that are happening in the world today that, um, that, that are signs and signals that, that we are in collapse, that, that our, our civilization is in decline, in rapid decline, really, I think. Personally, the number one thing that... that for me, and this may not be for you, but for me, that tells me that we are watching, we're watching everything fall apart 
and that is the, the rapid decline in morality, the, the rapid promotion of evilness and, and vulgarness and satanic uh, ways and just, de just degeneracy. It, it's, it's becoming at a level that it, even I was, have been sometimes shocked at things that I've seen. Like, oh my goodness, I, are they really taking it that far? Is that really going to be accepted? And over and over again, it seems to be accepted. And in my personal opinion, that is uh, one of the greatest signs uh, that we are, well, we're in those end times. So what, what he's sort of talking about there is kind of what I was trying to say is that it, it, when I said it starts from the top down is these people that are promoting these ideas, they may have the best intentions, but when they're, when they're doing things and they're lining their pockets at the same time, they're saying they're trying to help the underprivileged, the, the poor people, all of that, they're, they're lining their pockets. It's, it's, they're, they're defeating the, the purpose. They're lining their pockets at the same time. The, the people that are poorer, the people that are, they're supposed to be helping are getting, things are getting worse for them. And then they have to try to figure out that problem, uh, figure out solutions for that, that they basically just caused while still lining their pockets. And this goes for politicians. This goes for community leaders. This goes all the way down the line. Everybody is is worried about themselves first, but at the same time, you have this moral part of you that, that says, oh, I need to help the homeless. I need to help the poor. I need to do this. I need to do that. But at the same time, if you're trying to enrich yourself, you're not you're not solving a problem. You're, you're creating uh, a bigger problem down the line. And that's where society is gone these days. You've seen all the videos and things with people just going into stores, robbing them, filling up grocery carts and just leaving and getting away with it. And I know these are sort of anecdotal and it's not the larger picture, uh, but it, it's happening more and more often these days. He even says in that video that, yes, you can pick and choose certain things and you can build a case for something just for a few from a few different things. But it, it is something that is happening more often and more often. So uh, it's not something that's anecdotal. It may not be as bad as some people on social networks say it is, but it is increasing. So with that, what I want to do is talk about this article uh, from the Economic Collapse blog. And, and the title of this article is Mad Max Conditions Are Coming, Desperation Is Rising As The Economy Rapidly Deteriorates and Food Cost Soars. Now, this article starts off right here. It says, uh, how far would you go to feed your family? Hopefully, that's a question that you'll not have to answer anytime soon. But right now, we're seeing millions upon millions of people become more desperate as economic conditions rapidly deteriorate and food costs soar. At this point, most Americans are barely scraping by month to month. And in poorer countries, the other side of the world, where these people are little, literally starving to death. Uh, I've detailed previously, the UN has reported that 2.4 billion people did not have enough food to eat, uh, did not have enough food to eat last year, and 900 million of them were facing food insecurity. And further down here, it says uh, a global rice crisis has erupted and the collapse of the Black Sea grain deal has greatly restricted the flow of agricultural goods from that part of the globe. Food costs are spiking all over the planet, uh, and th this is really bad news for all of us. Now, it goes on to say in here that uh, those of us that live in the United States, this isn't really, uh, it's not affecting us like it is in other countries around the world. But at the same time, the economy, the things that we're seeing here, and, and I'm not talking about the fake numbers that the government throws out. I'm talking about going to the store and you see the prices. I'm talking about when you look at your bank account, uh, you're, you're seeing how much less money you have. Uh, and and it you get nickel and dime, so you don't really see it throughout the month until you sit down and you actually pay attention. But those types of things are happening to where uh, you know Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. Americans, you can't put enough away for savings. The money that you used to have that was a little bit of a buffer uh, is now decreased. And according to the government, everything's just fine. Everything's back on track. But we're seeing that it's not. Now in this article. They go on to say uh, inflation mortgage rates are over 7% and credit card APRs north of 20%. 
uh, have pushed, a, this has pushed income brackets into living paycheck to paycheck. Uh, and this is because they talk about in here, this is because of pandemic things. Uh, in, two, in 2023, 61% of U.S. consumers lived paycheck to paycheck, unchanged from June 23, but two percentage points higher than 22 Generally, more consumers of all income brackets reported living paycheck to paycheck in July of 23. A little further down here, they talk about how low income workers have been hit the hardest by high prices, particularly for food and other necessities. And this is what I was talking about earlier with the people that are barely scraping by anyway. What do you do uh, at that point where you just you can't even barely scrape by anymore? Now, 78% of consumers earning less than $50,000 a year and 65% of those earning between fifty dollars and $100,000 a year are living paycheck to paycheck in July, both up from a year ago. You think about if, if to, uh, that's the $100,000, to $100,000 a year, that's a, you know, a husband and a wife with both paychecks is probably in that range right there. So what should be a comfortable living, 65% of those people are living paycheck to paycheck. Now, according to the government, you know, what does does paycheck to, pay, to paycheck mean that you're not you're not you're you're barely scraping by? Not necessarily. Maybe there you used to be able to put a few hundred dollars into savings and then you'd build up that buffer. And now you can only put a hundred dollars into savings and it takes a longer time to build out that up that buffer. So what that means is if you had to just completely go without anything, say everything shut down and you had to go for a month, two months, three months, uh, some people would do that. But because of the way the economy is today, that a lot of people, most people in this country probably couldn't go a month without uh, having having to figure alternative means out. And that lends itself to the, the decay in society, the fact that the people that wouldn't normally do something illegal, steal, uh, things like that, when it becomes time, when it comes down to time to feed your family and, and or do something uh, that you absolutely have to do for survival, that's when the morals drop and your decision making process lends itself more to I've got to do what I've got to do at this point. So now they talk about in this article uh, down here uh, that uh, in the coming weeks, a giant food market in D.C. will clear its beauty and health aisle of all national uh, national labels. No more Tide, Colgate and Advil, only store brands. Shoppers will have to present their receipts to employees before exiting. Now, you think about this. We're not talking about televisions. We're not talking about jewelry. We're not talking about things that you can sell on eBay. He's talking about Tide, Colgate, and Advil, those, those household supplies that you need for just for daily life. Uh, so people are stealing those things, not the expensive things they can sell on eBay. Uh, so it's it's something it's it's more of a I have to do this or I'm not going to be able to uh, get through the month. I think back to when I was when I just moved out from my parents' house, and I had you know really strict budget you know literally living paycheck to paycheck almost a few days before the next paycheck uh, was when I ran out of money. And going to the store and buying laundry detergent, buying shampoo, buying toothpaste. Those were things that you don't really think about until all of a sudden you have to. And then all of a sudden you think that you have 20 bucks to buy food and dinner and beer and, you know, stuff like that. All of a sudden you have to buy toothpaste and that cuts into that. So those are the things uh, it's it's pretty interesting that those are the things that and I'm sure there's other things as well. But those are the things that are uh, that grocery stores are deciding that they need to lock up, that they need to protect a little bit better because, as a society, you've seen in, in the big cities, uh, this stuff is accepted. This stuff is, uh, it's it's just a part of doing business. And what you see is the de deterioration of everything. You've got businesses closing down, which slows down the economy. You've got all sorts of, you've got this behavior that never gets punished. So it just gets more and more. And people that are living paycheck to paycheck see these things going on. Uh, and they end up, they, you know, it's like, hey, I'm probably going to get away with this. If I don't, I'm going to get a slap on the wrist. It's going to be fine. So uh, the the problems in this country, I do see this as society deteriorating 
uh, to the point you look back 20 years ago, uh, where we were 20 years ago and how life was back then. And crime has always been a problem throughout history, but it really does seem like these days it's just getting more accepted. People are intentionally getting pigeon pit, pitched against each other. Uh, these these things that are going on are are problems that are created at the top. Yet the top is are the ones that are trying to get the glory for trying to solve these solutions. We care about the homeless. We care about the poor. We care about all these people. But when you really dig deep or you start at the top, like I said earlier, and you work your way down, you'll see that all those problems started up there because those people that say they are trying to help us, and this goes for all Americans, the people that tr say they're trying to help are the ones lining their pockets and doing things completely contradictory to what they're saying. And then when the problem gets to the point where it is now, that's when, uh, and you know, sometimes I, I, I say that I, I'd like to say that they try to find solutions, but sometimes they don't. Sometimes they find excuses for why these people are doing those things. So if nothing ever happens, uh, nothing is ever going to get solved. Nothing is going to deter them from doing that. And when you think about how society decays and, and over time and what it could be like in an SHTF type situation or even just a disaster that lasts a couple of weeks, uh, the 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 lower our society sinks and the more that is accepted, the easier or the quicker, I suppose, not the easier, but the quicker things will escalate in some sort of disaster. There are more people willing to throw away their morals and do the things that they need to do to survive, which is uh, the, you know, one of the main reasons that I prepare. I've mentioned this before that not only am I preparing for those yahoos out there to be doing those things, but I don't want to have to make that moral decision myself. I want to be able to feed my family. I want to be able to do the things that I need to do to survive, whether it's a month, two months, three months, and, and so on. Uh, if I don't do those things, I, there's a possibility that I do become one of those people that says, I need to do whatever I have to do to survive, uh, which if that means theft, if, if it is some sort of SHTF disaster type situation, grocery st shelves are probably going to be empty. What happens at that point with these people that go out and try to, that need to get food, that need to get these necessities, uh, drugs, alcohol as well, that need to get these things? If these stores are all ransacked, closed, boarded up, where do they go at that point? Because they're not going to just give up and say, well, I guess there is none. Uh, the next place is your house, my house, uh, they, their neighborhood, all of those things. So it is a situation where... It, it, society is, I, I just see it, and I agree with him, as he said in the video, uh, I, I'm not so sure about the end times thing, and, and maybe it is, but we're, we're seeing this decay of society, and, and every year it just gets worse and worse, and the powers that be, the, the people with the money are getting more money, they're, they're you know lining their pockets, doing whatever they want. There's a big separation between the leaders, uh, the quote-unquote leaders, of communities, government, whatever it is, the, the leaders and then the people at the bottom. There's this huge disconnect uh, there that at some point, that the further it gets out, the further it goes out, at some point it's got to get fixed, you would think. And, and how long is that? Who knows? Uh, but uh, it is absolutely something. I see the economy. I hear... I hear, you know, people talking about the soft landing and everything's coming back to normal and inflation is down because it's not up as high as it was last year. All a bunch of BS talking points from people that really don't have to worry about the things that we have to worry about. The people that sit at their, their dinner table in some fancy restaurant uh, spending three, four hundred bucks on a meal and talk about these problems while me and you are down here not talking about these problems because we're trying to figure out how to put food on the table. I'm trying to figure out how to build up my food storage, uh, you know, buy more meat, things like that before it becomes so outrageously priced, I'm not going to be able to afford it. And when that time comes that I can't afford it, uh, I will have some sort of buffer uh, for that situation, depending on how long something lasts. It could be something as simple as trying to get through a month because uh, for for a lot of people, it could be something as simple as just trying to get through a month or a couple of days, like I mentioned earlier, until your next paycheck comes. And having that food storage is going to help out there. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean it's some sort of massive disaster. Prepping is is all-encompassing when it comes to that stuff. So 
at any rate, I, I just saw that today and wanted to do a video on that. It, it's something that really is concerning both of these, and I think they all tie in together. Uh, the economy just completely, and who knows where that goes as well. That's a whole different video, but uh, the economy just just falling apart, basically, and I don't know if it's planned or not. Uh, it seems to me like it's planned. But the economy and then society just falling apart, the things that we're willing to accept, uh, the things that, especially in big cities, that they're willing to accept because of, uh, you know, you've, you, you can't you can't say this about homeless people. You can't say this about the poor people. You can't do that. You can't say this about drug addicts. At some point, you've got to do something. Uh, that doesn't mean putting your boot down, but the longer they push this off, uh, you know, it, it does eventually get to that point. So at, at any rate, that's it for this video. I appreciate you all watching. If you haven't subscribed, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Hit the like button. Uh, like I said, we've got the members.survivalistprepper.net group, which is not Facebook, not Twitter, not any of those uh, social media networks. It's just a strictly prepping group and get in there and we can say what we want and do what we want. So a uh, fantastic group. You can find that over at members.survivalistprepper.net. Uh, or you can join the bug out location, which is the bol.net or the bug out location.net. Uh, and you can, you actually get free access to that group as well, along with the prepping courses, the resources, and all of that stuff. So, uh, with that, I appreciate everyone watching today. Take care and prepare. We'll talk to you all later.